Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we are all over the world working, working with you. Uh, we give you a warm welcome to day one of the third International Conference and Pop Festival for Youth-Led Climate Action 2021. We are delighted to have you all join us for one of the biggest youth-led events for climate action. My name is Norma and I am from Mexico City. I really welcome you. We are very happy to have all of you join us for this very meaningful conversation. And when I say so, I think that you understand that this problem is very, very important and huge problem for us in the Caribbean region and also in the West Africa region. Uh, just to give you an idea of the objective of this session, we can say that the 8,850 kilometers long sargassum belt extending from the West Africa to the Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico is the world largest macroalgae bloom. This session will explore this new normal or altered ecosystem and ocean biochemistry caused by man-made factors. Discuss its implications and attempt to draw up approaches that can potentially address this complex and multifaceted issue. Today, we have the pleasure to introduce some of our speakers. Uh, at the first moment, uh, at this moment, I would like to introduce you, Dr. Francisco Arreguin. Dr. Arreguin is from Mexico and he is um, based on Baja California Sur in La Paz. And he's a very known researcher in fisheries and also on marine science. I will give you an idea who is Dr. Francisco Arreguin at this moment. Give me one second because his CV is so long that it's very difficult to read. Professor uh, at National Polytechnic Institute at the Marine Center Science. Currently, it leads and promotes the integrated approach to the management of fishing resources with criteria on population and natural ecosystems subject to exploitation are com combined with aspects of the economy of fishing, social welfare and governance to define the scientific basis of a strategy sustainable and viable management under criteria of adaptability to climate change. Since 2015, he has been involved in the study of sargassum banks in the Caribbean, addressing mesoscales, hypotheses related to climate change and local processes, such as estimation and prediction of massive banks on the beach. He is a member of the Mexican Academy of Science, National Research Chair Level 3 of the National System of Researchers, advising professor of East China Normal University. He, has, he was director of the Interdisciplinary Center of Marine Science of IPN from 21 to 24. In 2010, he received the Lazaro Cárdenas Presea, the highest recognition for research by the National Polytechnic Institute and delivered by the President of the Republic. In the same year, he received the State Award for Science and Technology and the Medal for Scientific and Technological Merit awarded by the Congress of the State of Baja California Sur. And in 2019, received the National Award for Sustainable Fisheries and Aquaculture. He collaborates as an international consultant with FAO on scientific fishery research policy, as well as on sustainable development, fisheries management, impact of fishing on social ecological ecosystem, and training of human resources. He has participated as an expert in thematic meetings, invited by the Director General for Research of the European Commission and by FAO. Likewise, he has acted as a director, member of governing bodies and of various scientific committees convened by government entities as well as research institutions. He was a member of the Advisory Council, Advisory Council Ecology of Merit 2016-2017 and in 2018 Sustainable Fisheries and Aquaculture Award. Member of the Science and Technology Committee of the Caribbean Sea Commission of the Association of Caribbean States. In the academic field, it has more than 200, 320 scientific publications and is among the 200 most cited, cited Mexican scientists worldwide. 
He has participated in nearly 400 scientific meetings. He has directed more than 50 research programs, 20 of them with international collaboration. He has taught more than 130 courses at the postgraduate level and has director, directed 75 theses, 26 doctoral, 34 masters, and 15 undergraduate. Welcome, Dr. Francisco Arreguin. Thank you so very much. We uh, are ready to listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I will share the, the screen. Uh, sorry, let me see. Can you say me if you can see the, yeah. the slides? Yeah. yeah. Let me. Yeah. You can go ahead. Let me, sorry, let, let me. Uh, okay, it's in the presentation way. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, Patricia, Dr. Muñoz, for inviting me to this to this session. Uh, I would like to talk about some uh, progresses uh, toward the prediction of Targassum strandings in beaches on the Caribbean Sea. Uh, this presentation is a, uh, I will try to show uh, quick things about these advances. Uh, we have been working uh, as uh, Dr. Muñoz mentioned uh, on mesoscale scale uh, hypothesis, because this is a phenomena uh, around the Atlantic, uh, but uh, especially uh, trying to solve local problems. Okay. Uh, the contents of the talk uh, is, I, I will be mentioned on the phenomena, because it's a phenomena with time scales. Uh, we have different, we have different uh, scales of uh, space, uh, time. These uh, this spaces in the scale uh, are couplets, are interdependent, and the, the, we will see that uh, they are nested, but uh, mostly are linked above the climatic and oceanic patterns. Basically, we are talking about the Central Atlantic Basin, the African America connection, the Brazil and Caribbean uh, Sea connection and local dynamics and beaches. We have uh, some evidences of the relationship between uh, the biomass accumulation uh, at the sea, in the open, open ocean, with uh, strandings on beaches. And with this information, we have the possibility to predict uh, future uh, strandings. As I mentioned, the, this picture tried to show uh, the, the yellow mass, is trying to show the Sargassum Sea, and the yellow lines uh, are the places in which strandings have been reported around the Atlantic. Uh, this is a, a global picture that is trying to, to show the dynamics of the, this part of the Atlantic. And we have the Atlantic Meridional Overton Circulation. This uh, circulation uh, is responsible for all the dynamics of the Atlantic, including climate. Uh, changes and these uh, patterns of currents uh, are related with atmospheric uh, conditions. And when it didn't change, all these change. There are two. Uh, let, me, let me. Okay. There are two uh, aspects of relevance here. Uh, probably uh, you know the, um, the North Atlantic Constellation uh, phenomena. Uh, this, this is an atmospheric phenomena related with the uh, pressure uh, of the atmosphere on the sea. Um, there are the cyclical uh, behavior uh, in, this, in the screen. You can see this, this picture shows almost uh, two centuries of year. We have a cyclical uh, behavior about uh, 80, 70, 80 years this cycle. We have uh, the anomaly, we have positive uh, phase and negative phase. Uh, from the 70s to the 2010, more or less, we, we were in the positive phase. Uh, and we, it, it was the, 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 the time in which we know more or less what happens in the ocean uh, related with the AMO uh, circulation. 
uh, when this uh, anomaly changes to the negative phase, is after the solar sentence. And this just when all these uh, aspects of the uh, around the sargassum uh, phenomena started. Uh, this was because uh, the currents change, uh, they, they, they are a weakened uh, weakness uh, of this current, winds, all the patterns uh, change, some uh, small masses of sargassum uh, can escape from the sargassum sea. And this, uh, apparently, the, uh, this is a mechanism in which uh, this is uh, working now. The point here is that the, this negative phase uh, of the uh, North Atlantic oscillation is, uh, we will finish uh, after the two, 2040 or 2050. This means basically that we will have uh, this process uh, around Sargasso present for the next decades. Sorry, okay. <laughs> I am trying to explain here which are the, the scales of uh, time space. Uh, the yellow, uh, the yellow line uh, represents all the all the Atlantic, the phenomena around the Atlantic. The uh, the green lines is uh, related with the connection between Africa and America. The blue line is the connection between Brazil and uh, the Caribbean, and the red one is only show uh, local phenomena. What this means basically is that all things that happens, for example, in the local phenomena are strongly related and interacting with, uh, with uh, processes that happens in the connection between Brazil and the Caribbean. And this connection is related with the connection between Africa and America. And all these things is, are part of the one uh, macro scale phenomenon. This is, it, this is important because at each scale of time and space, different patterns of climate are expressed. This is a uh, reason because it's quite difficult to predict. But if we understand uh, these processes, we can move on this, on this way. What we did, uh, uh, well, I, I, let, let me talk some. Uh, Curious things. <laughs> Curious because uh, in the 2015, a hotel in the northeastern coast of Yucatan uh, were recorded uh, the sargasso uh, that arrived to the beach in front of the hotel. Uh, they uh, developed a very uh, detailed uh, methodological, very, very detailed collection of data. They recorded daily the amount of sargasso that they that arrived to the beach. I will have access to this information from the 2015 up to now. Okay, <clears throat> with this information, we constructed the picture, uh, the first picture uh, here. This is a time series of daily information, really, uh, around the years. Uh, the second picture showed uh, the accumulation of sargasso year by year, uh, sorry, okay. And uh, the table show the rate of accumulation each year. And we name it the current capacity to the total amount of sargasso that arrived after one year. Uh, in 2018, one, uh, uh, no, 2019, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, one reported the biomasses estimated by satellite uh, of Sargasso, the, the region of the Atlantic, uh, Central Atlantic and Caribbean Sea. This is an histogram in the upper uh, picture. Uh, with this information, we did the same things that in the beach. We constructed the accumulated queues year by year. Yeah? And we, we can, you, we can uh, also estimate the accumulation rate in the ocean and the total amount of Sargasso at the end of each year. What we are, we are trying to do here is to relate the total amount of biomass in this region of the connection between Brazil and the Caribbean uh, with the strutting, uh, the sargasso strutting on one point in the beach in the peninsula of Yucatan. This is the, the relationships. 
Uh, the fifth picture are the, uh, the accumulation rate. Well, let, let me say that the, <coughs> sorry, that the black points are the inform is the information on the beach, and the red points are the information of the oceanic water of the Atlantic Caribbean uh, region. Uh, the fifth picture I said is uh, the accumulation rate. The right picture, uh, the upper right picture, is the accumulated biomass year by year. You can see the direct relationship, the strong relationship. And for those years in which we have uh, overlap between the information of the two regions, we have in the picture below the biomass of it uh, in the Atlantic region and the biomass is recorded on the beaches. What we noted here uh, is two, two important things. All of these are uh, very strong relationships okay? and that the signal between the information of the Central Atlantic and Caribbean Sea, the biomass detected by satellite, uh, reach the, in this case, the Yucatan Peninsula two months later. So we can practically predict how the, the relationships uh, between the biomass in the Atlantic and we have time to predict two months later, the biomass that can reach uh, this pitch in this case. Uh, using this information, we try to, uh, to predict some things. In the 2020, is the left side of the big uh, upper picture. Each, each black point is the information that you have reported month by month, uh, taking the information from the satellites. We construct these pictures. We can then predict, uh, for example, the total amount of targasm that uh, we will have at the end of the 2020s. This is uh, this, uh, this point, the predicted point. What we did with the information is we constructed a light uh, picture, uh, like the, tra the traffic light, uh, taking uh, low levels, medium levels, or high levels of gas and accumulated in the year. This is a picture panel. Uh, for the 2021, uh, we are making the same thing. We are uh, taking the information of the satellites month by month. And we are constructing uh, the, the advance of the accumulated biomass. This is the red light here. Okay, this is for the May. This is for June. The last, the last one. Uh, all prediction here is this is a uh, okay. Uh, sorry, the lane, uh, the red light here, is what is what was happening uh, until June. The black line is all prediction that we will happen for the next for the rest of this year. And our final prediction is that we will have uh, one of the years with highest amount of biomass in the ocean and on the beaches. All this information, I repeat, come from the NOAA and uh, University of Florida records. <laughs> but uh, what we are doing now is to try to construct a model to predict the sargassum biomass but using the climate information indicators. Uh, the AMOS uh, circulation index, uh, you remember that it was uh, of the macro scale uh, indicators. We have uh, the mixed layer depth recorded in the ocean. Uh, we have the sargassum biomass at that level, uh, the Atlantic. Uh, we have uh, the estimated biomass, the histogram uh, is the estimated biomass from the region of the Caribbean and, and Brazil. And we have also the Mexican uh, uh, sargassum uh, stranding in the beaches, is it, uh, the lower uh, histogram. Uh, if you remember, each, uh, all the time series uh, are a composition of harmonic component of different frequencies. We can uh, disaggregate these harmonic components and use only those components that explain uh, most of the variation of the, of the time series. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do this. We will try to do this to replicate uh, the most relevant um, sources of variation of the different scales of the uh, uh, climate signals at different scales and linking them. We are. Uh, we will try to predict 
now Sargasso, but using this information. Okay, that's that's all that I uh, want to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Arreguin, for your communication about the situation of sargassum, the prediction that is not so good for us this year. Thank you so much. And uh, now I will give the floor to our second guest. Alejandro Bravo is coming, uh, come up. He's trying to, to connect. But for the moment, if you don't mind, I will give the floor to Mr. Ting Yong Louis. If it's possible, Mr. Ting Yong, he's here. Uh, we would like to hear you and to to be aware what you're you going to tell us about the sargassum. And I feel sorry you were the last, but I think that is good if you give us your talk now. Thank you so much for being, for being with us, to be with us. Thank you. Please, for you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the sargassum. Uh, aspect uh, in Cameroon. Uh, I'll be basing my, I'll be focusing on the coastal ecosystems of Bakasi in particular because that is where uh, the heart of uh, Cameroon mangrove forest is based. And in this regard, I would be like, I would like to share with you, uh, if you permit me to share with you some of what. Uh, we have in this ecosystem so I can see I don't know if you are getting me clearly yeah we can hear you clearly uh, and I will ask Oma to make uh, you go host so, yeah so you can share your screen thank you if you if you would like to tell us uh, at the beginning if you okay. mind you where you are what you do because we don't have your bio and we will know exactly the uh, something about okay. you <laughs> thank you so much okay thank you very much once again i am as i'm called i'm tinjon luis Nigeria. i'm a senior forestry technician i work with the uh, fidepe foundation in the southwest regions of cameroon uh, we are the representatives of never Dumont cameroon apart consortium uh, we are, uh, apart consortium uh, we also work with uh, ICA Consortium of Cameroon, probably for the uh, that based in the protection of indigenous rights of local communities. And with this regard, I'll be talking with you today on uh, essentially. I don't know if my screen is visible with you now. Hello. Uh, sorry, it's not visible. Hello? Hello, uh, sir, it's not visible. I can't hear you clearly. Uh, my signals are really very weak. I don't know if there's on another way. Or well, probably I have to uh, go only with the audio. We can, see, we can could... see your screen, Pinyong. We can see your screen. Oh, okay, you see my screen? Yeah, you can share it now if you want. Okay, it is shared. Yes, as I was talking about uh, Philippe's activities here uh, carried out within the framework of the implementation of uh, PINESMA BPC, that is uh, Participative Integrated Ecosystem Management Plan for the Bakasi Post-Conflict Ecosystems. Uh, for the Bakasi Conflict Ecosystems, we have the Integrated Ecosystem Management Plans for Bakasi and Philippe management plans for the Bakasi in the Cameroons, uh, probably in the West African country. So in Bakasi particularly, it is dominated by uh, mangroves, which are the intertidal zone of sheltered muddy coastlines of tropical, subtropical, and warm oceans. These transitional zones and their tidal positions vary globally as they are dependent on many factors, which could be climate change, human factors, uh, and all the rest. The estimated mangroves in Cameroon, as of uh, 1980, was 275, uh, 272,000 hectares. And we had uh, 
estimated to 2005, we had a drastic drop of about 30%, which gives us a result of about 197 hectares of uh, coastal mangroves in Cameroon, which means that the mangrove loss approximately per year is at 2,500 uh, 500, uh, hectares of the mangroves lost every year. So what are the activities that are actually hindering or modifying render uh, which result to this ecosystem changes? We have fishing activities because the principal activities of the local communities of Bakasi. Um, permit me to reiterate that uh, talking about Bakasi Peninsula or the Bakasi mangrove ecosystem, we have five council areas of Sangale, Idabato, Bamoso, Combo Abedimo, Combo Itindi. And with these five communities, all of them depend on uh, fishing for their source of livelihood. They also do hunting for bushmeat, timber exploitation, agriculture, mining, and cultural, cultural activities. And with this, we notice that this ecosystem has a lot of importance as far as it is concerned. We have ecological, which could be grouped into ecological importance and to human importance. Uh, mangroves, for example, is five times carbon sink as compared to the upland forests. So this ecosystem is very vital. It equally filters water. It, hide, it acts as a juvenile uh, hideout for aquatic species, most especially the young fingerlings that are still growing. This mangrove ecosystem helps in protecting them and having, helping them grow in biomass, in the production of biomass too, or for their fodder and the rest. And in as much as the, uh, the mangrove sea exists, which is already facing some threat, it is a source of habitat for endemic species. We'll be talking about, we're talking about species here like the, uh, marine species, both marine and terrestrial species, like the red tail, uh, red tail monkey. We have, we equally have uh, uh, the African gray parrots, which are already classified as endangered species. And we cannot underestimate the importance of mangroves in coastal protection. That is from erosion, from tsunamis, from natural disasters. You know, uh, looking at these natural disasters, it winds, breaks, and we notice that it is only in these mangroves that the local communities are able to tap out uh, timber resources for the production of their boats, for the production of the uh, of their, for the construction of their houses, for the, for the construction of their fishing materials. And equally, it is far, far important, beneficial to this ecosystem. And they equally help in collecting mollocks and fishing activities, which is very important in these ecosystems. We notice that despite all of these importance, these ecosystems still face a lot and a lot more threats than the ecosystem itself can equal, that is the threats that it faces is beyond its auto-regeneration and auto-restoration from, uh, from the ecosystem. The threats of these ecosystems, which are yet rather and enormous, they result from man-made causes and natural factors. Some of these factors, which include uh, climate change, natural disasters, weak institutional policies. I will emphasize on this weak institution institutional policies uh, here in Cameroon. We noticed that uh, in 1994, when the forestry law was uh, passed in Cameroon, the first forestry law, it did not take into consideration uh, the marine ecosystem, the coastal, the land use pattern of the marine ecosystems of Cameroon, which is highly, very, very dangerous. We still see it existing, we still see from from the rate at which the ecosystem is being degraded. These weak uh, institutional policies and uh, frameworks are key factors that threaten these ecosystems. So with this impact, other activities coupled with these weak institutional policies to quickly degrade this ecosystem. We talk of the mining companies that exist, that exist and 
based on their activities, we have spills and poor waste disposal that only helps in degrading this ecosystem, helps in killing vast numbers and quantities of, uh, of uh, wildlife, marine wildlife that's available, that is already diminishing as compared to the past. We are experiencing a diminishing rate of these ecosystem resources provision. So you look at this beach, for example, we have massive deforestation. This beach is the beach of Idabat, one of the subdivisions of the ecosystem that inhibits mangrove for it, mangroves. And with this, you can see that there's massive destruction, massive clear cutting, that this clear cutting has been exceeded and it has exposed the ecosystem to erosion and other climate uh, related factors that are harmful for the for the inhabitants of the self and the coastal uh, ecosystem. Excuse me, hello? Yeah, we are listening to you, Louis, but we are not watching okay. your your screen. Okay. You are not seeing my screen? No, no, no. Oh, my no. apologies. Uh, Don't worry. Uh, we are power failure, so I'm trying to communicate using my phone. So this, I think that's the problem. We have power failure and I have a fixed uh, desktop. So my PC is not able to understand it. I'm okay, so sorry can, about that. Yeah, you can share us the, the screen mm -hmm. to, you can send us the presentation and we will share it with all the, the participants. And uh, we have so okay. many to, left to for you because we have another speaker. Oh, okay, Thank you. okay. Thank you. I get you clearly. We equally have experiencing bad fishing methods around this ecosystem, like the use of dynamic dynamite fishing and nets with uh, poor nets and press, or using teasers in fishing. These are some of the activities that pertains the ecosystem development. We would not like to talk here and forget the rate at which the infrastructure development is uh, developing in these areas. We have demographic changes. We have demographic changes that affect these ecosystems. And with these demographic changes, it goes on to economic, both economic activities that, in, that equally affect this ecosystem adversely, you know. So aside from this, we, we equally look at the nipa palm. That is an invasive species. It is it's just like Sagasum too. It started quite gradually from Nigeria and transported by currents, so river currents in Cameroon. And today we have a vast area in which they are already invaded and it's degrading uh, the natural mangroves that was existing in this area. This these factors, however, influence the ecosystem in many ways, uh, most especially, I mean, the Bakasi mangrove ecosystem. So what future now do we have between mangroves and Sagasum in Bakasi Peninsula? It is true that most research has not been done uh, in this coastal ecosystem to determine the rate at which in occur the rate of occurrence, you know, the rate at, of occurrence of uh, sagasum, uh, uh, sagasum in this ecosystem. We equally see that though sagasum at one point is important as high down to for, for juvenile fish and as for them, it is very much imperative for us to carry out a thorough research, thorough both scientific and uh, that respects scientific methodologies and propose online and sensitize the local communities on the dangers of, of invasion from Sagasum. So if Sagasum happens to invade this ecosystem, this already a fragile ecosystem, it will be an enormous danger for them because it will not only affect the ecosystem, uh, the local population, it equally affects the lives of those, uh, of those species that exist and cohabit within these ecosystems. We, uh, when I talk about, and what approach are we supposed to use? We are supposed to be talking about the ecological approach and artificial approach. So we talk about research and community mangrove forest management. 
when I refer to community mangrove forest management, is a means through which the local communities, the indigenous communities, the indigenous communities can be able to utilize their resources, their energy, and traditional uh, ecological sound systems to protect their mangrove forests from other external factors or further uh, unsustainable exploitation. So that is an actual essence because these mangroves at one point, I believe can help in trapping and the spread of, uh, uh, of sagasum in uh, mangroves, in the Bakasi mangroves and Cameroon coastal ecosystems. And in another aspect, the much behind this uh, era of ecosystem restoration. This decade is the decade of the nation's decade of environmental restoration. We need to restore most of these degraded sites that are already existing. This calls for semicultural approach. That is in a way that we are going to ameliorate what is gradually going down, what is gradually growing down uh, on, in a way that uh, we cannot actually uh, repair, you know. So some of the key activities that uh, the Bay Foundation has already been doing in these areas or in these ecosystems are uh, the identification of various groups, including local residents, environmental clubs, schools, Jangi groups, and and their training needs. And we have done for them to effectively participate in the integrated ecosystem management plan. Okay. And we have been able to strengthen the capacities of these local communities for, for some, particularly Sangale Council area, for adopting best practices in sustainable management of natural resources. We have trained local communities of alternative uses of energy other than mangroves as well, because they depend entirely on these mangroves as source of energy. We have been able to train them on the production of uh, portable biogas digesters. And Louis, Louis, sorry, you yes. think that we can leave this for the discussion because we have another speaker. Okay, there's no problem for that. Okay, then we will we will have a discussion after uh, next the, our next speaker, and you can explain everything that you are telling now about the what you're gonna do from now. Are you okay with that? I don't have any problem with that. Thank you so much, Louis. Yeah, well, sorry for the interruption, but we need to, to listen to the next speaker and I will be able to introduce you to Alejandro Bravo. He is also from Mexico. He is an oceanographer since 2000, master in marine resources management, master's degree in fundraising and management, co-author of the first pilot project for the integral management of Sargasso in Puerto Morelos, Quintana Roo, Mexico, in 2015. Uh, and uh, he has a participation in COP16. He had a participation in Cancun in 2010, International Congress, Sargasso Congress in Cancun, Mexico, in 2019, Sargasso International Conference, Guadalupe Island, French, in 2019 expert in bathymetric surveys and field work to integrate ocean, sorry, geographic information systems for coastal projects, aware that citizen participation is crucial to help in government decisions for the benefit of society. Dear Alejandro, thank you so much for your participation and uh, we would like to hear your intervention now. Thank you so much to be with us. Thank you, Norma, for inviting me to this important session. Hello to everyone in all the world. Uh, here in Cancun this, this year, we're, we are again trying to, to deal with this problem. It's really very a very huge pro problem with us because we are having, I mean, you, you can see the, the image behind and you can, Imagine all, all the people that used to come to, to Cancun and, and all the 800 kilometers of beaches in Quintana Roo state of Mexico. And they are looking for a beach of uh, white, uh, white sand 
and blue waters. And well, it's uh, really a shame and it's also very sad for us to look at this piece now. So unfortunately, we are having a very big problem. And well, also a part of the touristic problem, all this uh, sargassum that arrives to the, to the beach, it de decomposes and it creates a lot of uh, uh, the olor of, well, how can I use smell? The, the beach is very awful and it looks brown, even dark. Uh, I mean, almost uh, black, black, black water and all the impact in the ecosystem that it generates is awful. All the biodiversity that used to live and used to re reproduce in this, uh, in, in the coast or so next, next to the coast, they, they do not, cannot sur sur survive because the, the temperature of the water increases almost uh, 10 centigrades and also all the uh, you used to have clear waters transparent waters and with this sargassum next next to the beach i mean you you cannot see anything you get you can get in, into the ocean and it's like if you close your your eyes trying to look to the to the bottom so the affection and the how it Re regrets all the, the tu tourism and the ecosystem is a very huge uh, e ecological disaster that is basically what i can what i can say uh, show you here and so well we are we are ha uh, trying to do some efforts in 2015 there uh, the government wasn't doing anything the the government from the local com community the government from the state of quintana roo and the government of the of mexico the the government of the country they don't know what to do so it's only from the society from the bottom of, of the society for the ones that are really suffering the impact of this of the sargassum the ecological impact and the e economic impact uh, is where me and Guadalupe Velasquez, a, a doctor that also lives in Puerto Morelos, next, next to Cancun, uh, we start to thinking what, what to do. So since the beginning of the Sargassum arrival, I start doing some barriers, uh, barriers that I was uh, I cut a, a tube in in half, so I, I put something to, to float in the in the ocean, so it it was working. So I I was trying to put these these barriers in front of the hotels, in front of the the ports, in front of, of the, uh, places where the sargassum was more se severe its arrival. So that's why I was. Uh, well, pushing this uh, project, uh, and there in, in Puerto Morelos we did uh, a meeting of people, and from the society, all of this was from the society, and so there there came a person that that was that he in, invented uh, uh, it was uh, a boat to re recollect this orgasm. This this person was from Puerto Morelos. There came another person for, from there, from Puerto Morelos, to to know how, what to do with the sargassum. He was doing a fer fertilizer, and another person uh, to he, he had an, an an idea of how to e extract the sargassum from the from the ocean and, and put it in a in a in a truck. So in in this in this meeting that that we made in. 2015, uh, there were all, all, the, all the people that, that can participate in a project. So this, this project was the, 
the first uh, project, pilot project that the government have. So they they listen to us. They they, they listen to to our ideas, and finally, well, it, it was the only project that that they could uh, support. So finally, they they made this happen, and well, at the end, the, this project was the beginning of all the activities that they are doing right now. So we are still. Uh, learning even though we have five, five years of dealing with this problem we are still learning how to how to keep our beaches clean because it's, it is not very easy it's very difficult this year we are having one of the worst years of sargassum arrival to to quintana roo even to 2018 was and maybe the the worst, but the, this one is uh, is being very uh, the, uh, an, an ecological disaster. So maybe every two years it's gonna it's going to become worse, worst and worst. And we are really worried because all the people de depend on their on their jobs, and they and 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 they and their jobs depend on the on the clearance of the beaches and the and the water so if, if we don't don't have an uh, a clear beach to the tourist to come to here to mexico to have their vacation well when we don't have anything to offer them so we will not have any tu touristic employees here in mexico at, at least in quintana roo mexico and and that can affect all the uh, population that that lives next next to the coast and that's kind of a, a few million of people that live uh, here in cancun so we are really very very worried about this problem here that's what i can say now to try to make a resume and to listen to more people thank you so much alejandro well we hear from our experts that the sargassum is um, provoking a lot of uh, problems and we share those problems, economic and environmental. And of course the society is suffering a lot because of the situation of the arrival of sargassum. I would like now to open the floor because we have a little time, but I would like to invite our participants, our um, attendees, if they have some questions for our experts, here we have Francisco Reguin, Alejandro Bravo, and Louis, Tion Louis, that they are able to hear you and to listen uh, to you if you have any question about this enormous problem that we have around the West African coast and the Caribbean region here in the Americas. Please. If you have something, Kamal, can you help me? If you have some questions for our experts, or if somebody wants to leave the raise the hand and to say yes, I want to I want to know something from them, you are free to do it. <laughs> no, no one, no one wants to know something. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Ivan, please. Go ahead, Ivan. Yeah, thank you so much. And I would like to ask uh, Dr. Francisco if the sargassum, I mean, if there are any studies like relating some uh, health issues to the species that may feed on the sargassum. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, Something happened with my oh, okay. audio. Uh, could you repeat? Yes, question? yes. Uh, so my question is, if is there any studies relating to the health issues that um, other species, ah. like animal species, have by feeding on sargassum? Ah, uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> No, and it, and it is because uh, some people there is a lot of discussions because uh, many people, with some reason, 
data de sargasso is per se a natural ecosystem. And the sargassum uh, can retain uh, mostly rec recruit small animals that uh, will be adults later or are the, the basic uh, uh, the basis of the food chain, something like that. Uh, but there are other things uh, where the sargassum causes problems with the sea turtles, for example, uh, large uh, pelagic fishes, something like that, they uh, uh, are trapped uh, within the sargassum. There are apparently, in, in ecological terms, there are apparently good things and bad things. Uh, I, I don't like uh, to talk very much uh, when, uh, I don't like to say it is, is a very bad aspect in natural sense, or is a good uh, issue. A uh, problem really is not, uh, I think, is not uh, necessarily in the natural aspect, because the nature responds uh, by itself. You see, the problems uh, are the, the impact that it has in the human ecosystems. For example, uh, Alejandro mentioned some problems in the tourism in the in 2019. Uh, you know, the Cancun uh, area is one of the most important tourist uh, places in Mexico. Only this point contribute with uh, all with need of two percent of the growth uh, of the gross domestic in income in the country. It's, it's large. The, uh, in, 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 in I remember that in 2019 the gross income of Mexico was. Uh, 1.3 billion dollars. You know, one point in the coast of Yucatan, uh, or in Quintana Roo, basically, uh, country with, with two persons. But the gross income only measures uh, the monetary value of the goods and services, but don't say nothing about the, the human uh, issues, the poverty, the well being, the social security or uh, at least indicators don't say nothing about ecological uh, issues. Evidently, we have a lot of problems with these things, both in the, in the sense that uh, the impact that causes with us. One of the, uh, uh, the most important questions that we have now is what happened with the sargassum at the end of the, of the sargassum season. Sargassum died. Where did it, where, uh, where, where go this uh, sargassum? We've got millions of stones on the sea. What happened with the sargassum uh, when, uh, when it dies? Where, 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 uh, where, where the sargassum go? You know, we, we don't know these things. And evident, evidently, there is a large of biomass that is in the ecosystems, and we don't know uh, nothing about this. It's one of the uh, large, uh, quest, uh, the great questions to be solved. And this is, uh, uh, but, but we don't notice other impact about these mortalities, or these massive mortalities. Is the reason because I say that uh, the nature can respond naturally to these events. Evidently, again, we have some uh, uh, damages, as we can see, some impacts or not the solid impacts, but uh, we saw in the social terms. I, I'm not sure if I can uh, answer the question. Thank you, thank you, Francisco. Alejandro and Luis, do you have any specific answer to this question? What happened with the um, biodiversity who is feeding, that is feeding from the sargassum that arrives with a lot of uh, nutrients and um, with a lot of uh, heavy metals? There is a problem of biomagnification there, or we don't know because we is not our field. Do you know somebody who is working with that in that field? Please. Well, I have a particular opinion about it because uh, there had been uh, a few uh, articles, scientific articles. That they, that they say that sargassum 
uh, has a, pro a problem for its use and and because of the heavy metals that, that it has. But uh, that is something that, that is not helping to the in industry because uh, I have the, the chance, for example, of bringing, of bringing this, uh, sar sar this orgasm, give it to people to feed cows, cows. And also it, it can be used for the, for the cans, for the, or for the hens, for, to, the, to the kitchens. So this uh, sargassum can be put in the, in the floor of the, of the hens. So, but it, it has been said everywhere that sargassum has uh, heavy metals. So the people from the field, from the country, the owner of the, of the cows and the farms, they are afraid of using this uh, sar sargassum for any, any, any purpose. <coughs> And here it can be used for a lot of purpose to to do bricks, for example, to to feed uh, cows, and but that uh, if they if they think or if they know that it has heavy metals, it cannot be used. But I think that sargassum has we we have to make more studies of in sargassum. So to, to really be, be uh, certain that the heavy metals can affect the, the animals. Also, they say that it has uh, arsenic, but what kind of arsenic can, can it have? Even also the, the water that, that we drink has arsenic in a very little per percentage. So, there, that those uh, those are some concepts that have to be more clear, to so we can use this orgasm in the industry of the of feeding animals or using it in in any purpose because sargassum is a very useful element to use it to to many things so that uh, kind of investigations are really a problem for the industry and to use all the uh, sargassum to a lot of things. That's my opinion. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, I will go to Ivan very quickly, Ivan, because we are running out of time. Uh, Dr. Norma, there is a question from Kevin in the chat box also. Oh, yes, I will I will read. Uh, can, you okay. go, can you go quickly, Ivan, please? Because I, I would like to read the the note that we have here on the chat, please. Okay, sure. So just a quick follow-up question. Uh, I was thinking uh, that maybe, well, if that's a possibility that this sargassum uh, problem that we have is a result of the, um, like the fisher, fisher industry, as it is replenishing all the fish and all the animals in the, in the sea, maybe that's one of the reasons that before they used to eat them, and now as we don't have those animals in the sea, then it's just accumulating and accumulating. Either that, and um, well, and our stuff. What I was thinking is that could be one of the reasons. Okay, I think that I will I will refer the note for Alejandro, and then we will have the last um, space for a quick answer to Ivan. For Alejandro, I would like to know about the public perspective. I know business are worried, but that what, what about general public? Do they know what's happening or fake information is on some people's mind? Very quick answer. Uh, Alejandro, please, you know exactly what is going on in Cancun. Mic is, your mic is closed, Alejandro. Uh, is the, the same what I was answering? There, there is some, it is not fake information and it is a scientific information, but unfortunately they are doing a lot of uh, noise about this information. And maybe we, and we need to make more studies of, of the heavy metals in sargassum to, to, so we can use sargassum in more aspects. Thank you, Kevin, for your question. 
Thank you, Alejandro. Paco, the teacher field fisheries, can you give a quick answer to Ivan, please, if something is related to the fisheries and the, the trolling? Yes, no. No, the, uh, no, it's not. Uh, there is not a relationship between fishing and the sarcasm uh, phenomenon. Uh, I have uh, the experience of working with trophic networks around uh, fisheries in different parts of the world and uh, collaborate with people. And uh, we have no information uh, about a relationship, a significant relationship between the sargassum process with uh, the development of fisheries. This, this is not, uh, these are not uh, any evidence. And I think there will be not evidence about this. Okay, thank you so much, Francisco. Louis, your last word, if you want to say something, please. Louis, are you there? I think that's not anymore here with us. Okay, well, listen, thank you so very much for your participation, for your presentation. If any of uh, the attendees or the participants wants to keep in touch with each other, please send us your contact by uh, email and uh, we will be happy to have your intervention, your interconnectivity with everything, with everybody. And we will be very happy to have you again in another of our sessions very soon. Uh, say so if you have the time to put your, your email, please. Well, thank you so very much for this interesting um, participation, for the comments, for the information that you give to us today. And uh, well, we hope that we will have a, another solution and a solution for our huge problem in the West African coast and the Caribbean. And specifically, if we take care of our ecosystems, our biodiversity that is suffering, and specifically also people, and of course, the economic aspects and economic issues in some of the coastal areas that they are living mainly from the beautiful beaches and the beautiful waters. And so, thank you so much for everything. If you will uh, say goodbye to everyone, thank you for the attendees. Thank you, Paco, thank you, Alejandro. And we hope to see you soon again for another session of Sargassum with a very good news, better news than today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia, and thanks to all. Thank you, Thank so you everyone. Uh, thank you, Francisco. <laughs> thank you, see you. <laughs> thank you, see you. I, I would like to uh, request our participants to stay over for the testimonials, please. Uh, just, just the participants, sir. Can you re repeat the, the question? In Spanish, please. Uh, algo en español. <laughs> uh, you, a, a... Yeah, I, I was just saying that if our young people could stay for, for the testimonials, please. Uh, we are we are following the with the young people testimonies from you as a as um, speakers. You want to say in Spanish is not a problem. We will make a translation. Un testimonio de lo que has vivido y de lo que participaste aquí. ¿Qué le dirías a los jóvenes? ¿En español? Sí, en español lo puedes hacer. You can make it este, in bueno, es, para mí es un gran gusto que tengan la, el interés por este tipo de problemas a nivel mundial, ya que son ustedes los, los que van a vivir más en, en un futuro y los que tienen que traer las soluciones reales para el desastre que tenemos actualmente a nivel mundial. Gracias, Ale. Paco. Thank you very much. I just uh, want to say that uh, our experience uh, in these issues, is, in the case, is related with the uh, intention to generate some knowledge to help uh, social problems, especially uh, things like uh, poverty and causes of the poverty. Uh, the issue in the, of the sargassum uh, is generating a lot of problems and it making poor people more, more, 
more, more uh, it generated more, uh, more poverty. This is like uh, what I am moving on this on this way. Uh, in addition to my own uh, curiosity, politics, I would like to uh, say to the young people that they must uh, follow and go on those things that uh, they have in their mind uh, by uh, uh, curiosity. The curiosity is the, 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 the main force to move on. <laughs> so try to follow, try to follow the things. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. You, the floor is yours. Kamal, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Norma. Uh, I think uh, we are at the end of the session now and uh, we, we may do the closing for this session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We have our next session uh, in one hour, uh, actually 45 minutes. So uh, we, we, we will see you there. So it's on the climate crisis. Uh, we have a youth panel who will share their dialogue uh, from different parts of Africa on the uh, climate crisis. And they will cover uh, three different topics on um, drought, floods, and oil spillage. Thank you so much. Looking forward to see you in the session. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you so much to everyone. See you uh, for the next session. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.